Welcome to the Marketing Star Podcast by Starista, probably the most entertaining marketing podcast you're going to put in your ear. I'm Vin, the associate producer here at Starista. The goal of this podcast is to chat with industry leaders and get their take on the current challenges of the market, and we'll have a little fun along the way. In today's episode, Vincent and AJ talk with Christine Escribano, the Senior Vice President of Marketing at NBC Universal. She discusses how marketing is a dimensional industry and how telling a brand story helps with sales. Vincent loves the fall weather in New York and AJ wins a tournament. Give it a listen. Welcome to another episode of Starista's The Marketing Stir. I am extra happy today. It's sweater weather here in New York. I've got my purple sweater on. Who isn't happy in a purple sweater, ladies and gentlemen? Marketing Stir. Vincent Petrofessa, one of your hosts, the vice president of B2B products and partnerships here. Let's talk about Starista for just one second. That's all. We just take up a few seconds of the podcast. We are an identity marketing company. We have our own business to business database, our own business to consumer database. We help customers utilize those databases to get new customers. New customers are great, aren't they? And also we have our own DSP where we're uh, executing media, display, OTT, connected TV. Email me at vincent at starista.com. That is how confident I am that we could help. The other thing I'm confident in is our guests all the time, especially the guests we have today. We'll get to her in a moment, but my co-host, I'm confident in him. He's got some big news, personal news on his tennis front, ladies and gentlemen. We, uh, the people who listen to the podcast are always, uh, in, you know, intrigued and asking about his tennis career. Ladies and gentlemen, my co-host, the CEO of Starista, AJ Gupta. What's going on, AJ? Hey, Vincent. Thanks. It's uh, actually, it's, it's the coldest day of, uh, I guess, the latter half of the year here as well. It was 45 degrees in the morning, which is pretty unusual for San Antonio. But, yeah, that, that is yeah. An, unusual. It's around, what, maybe 50 here in New York. I oh, love cool. it. I love this weather. But th- that's the coldest you get. But no, this is not the coldest we get. <laughs> February is awful in New York City. Yeah, but uh, we had a, a great weekend, actually. Uh, five out of eight people on my uh, team, we played the uh, this weekend are from uh, our work here, right? at Starista and we won the uh, state championship for 8-5, which is a uh, 4-0 and a 4-5, the upper level of uh, tennis doubles. So it was, uh, I would say, an unexpected win. Well, we, we thought we were going to win. Nobody else thought we were going to win. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> no, that's awesome. I, I was uh, happy to see that. People have been following it now, the 4-5 yeah. and the, in the 4-0 and the 4-5. This, of course, ladies and gentlemen, this is this isn't the you know this isn't McEnroe, this isn't Nadal, but this is you know a big deal. This is a yeah. big deal. Different levels, different states uh, involved, different areas. So I was happy to see that more trophies, more hardware for the uh, Starista trophy case. Yep, yeah, for sure. We we have actually got a big banner. So next time you're in the office, uh, you'll see it uh, hanging somewhere. We got to find out find a good place for it. But yeah, we beat uh, 14 teams uh, to get here. So it was was a great accomplishment. I love it. I love it. And let's go right into it. Accomplishments, because let me talk to you about this next guest, ladies and gentlemen. Let me just say a few things before I start. NBC Universal. NBC. Heard of them? Yeah, you have. Look how lucky we are to have this organization, and especially this guest, AJ. Let me tell you something. There are guests who are on the show, and we form bonds after or, you know, the process and during. We already formed a bond prior to you to talking. We have so much in common. She is a New Yorker like me. She is Italian, like me, and she uh, will get to some of the other things we have in common uh, later on in the podcast. But ladies and gentlemen, please, the Senior Vice President, Mm -hmm. Head of One Platform Marketing at NBC Universal, Chris Escribano. What's going on, Chris? Hey, how you guys doing? We are great. It's sweater weather, right? Do you love the fall? 
Vincent, we say sweater weather from where sweater I'm from. Sweater weather, I know. It's cold sweater out weather. over here. I know. It's cold out. It's crazy. You know, <laughs> it's, uh, but yeah, I love it. This is uh, the first day I broke it out. It was cold. It's, uh, I like this time of year here in New York City, Absolutely. but it is, uh, it's great to see you again. Thank you. Uh, I'm here. I had some technical difficulties with my computer, but now I'm here and I'm ready. It's early in the morning. It's the beginning of the week. I love it. I love when we do the podcasts right after the weekend because it gets us right into it. But Chris, thank you so much. You love Mondays as much as Fridays, huh, Vincent? I can tell. I am one of those people. I (laughs) know. Yeah, I love it. it, I am this. Look, this is how much coffee I had, uh, you know, right here. I just had this much, and this is me. It drives my wife crazy. It drives my CEO crazy. Uh, but this is, I'm class happiest, 1996, Porchester High School. Just gave my age out there. It's okay. But oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I am. But you seem happy as well, Chris. I f- did you feel the connection between you and I, I uh, immediately? You know, there's something about that shorthand when you find out someone's from New York and they're Italian, you know, and that's it. You know, I have, I have actually, I know we talked about the, the Vinny thing and someone says to you, I have a cousin Vinny. I actually have a cousin Vinny. Yep. So I, I was so Is confused. it me? Are we, am I like really Maybe. your cousin? It might be, you never know. Right? You, you guys are not from Alabama. Alabama. <laughs> no, no, without, not really, we're not from Alabama. We are born and bred in New York. Are you born and bred in New York, Chris? Brooklyn, Brooklyn nice. girl. Nice. Brooklyn. Our, one of our producers is Brooklyn. I'm born uh, and raised in Westchester County, but not the wealthy Westchester you read about. There's a few <laughs> nice blue collar, gritty towns yeah. in there. Port Chester, New York. Shout out to Port Chester, uh, New York. Uh, that's where I'm from. But then I moved here to Manhattan about 11 years ago. Uh, yeah. So lot, lots, lots in common. My cousin Vinny. I love it. That's that's we already have you know, we'll throw an episode name here. We always do stuff like that. No, we're not going to do that. <laughs> not going to do that. No, we won't do that. But Chris, talk to me. Like, so NBC Universal, people, right. you know, if you don't know, you know, NBC Universal, come on. It's, it's, you're living uh, under a rock if you you're don't You're living know, under a sure. rock, right? You're living under 30 rock. Hey, look at that. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Oh, see, look at how it's this so is just comes naturally, you know, this Monday, it's a Monday morning. I love it. So Chris, but, but tell us about, you know, your particular role within the organization. Um, and, and, you know, specifically, I would love to understand the platform that is, that you work on. Uh, that's question one for me. And then question two is how you got in to marketing. This, uh, this crazy thing we call marketing, we always love to know, it's a staple question on the marketing stir. So the floor is yours. So, um, you know, it's interesting, NBC Universal, there's so much you do know, right? You know, NBC, you know, Late Night, Jimmy Fallon, Saturday Night Live, probably even know Bravo and USA, mm-hmm. but, you know, this company is so utterly vast. Um, and in the last couple of years, we acquired a lot of businesses from Sky Media and we merged um, our companies. We have obviously a local group. We have a partnership with Apple News. Universal Parks and Universal Pictures is part of our, you know, Focus Features is part of our portfolio. So I have the coolest job you've never heard of. So I, I just got to start there. It literally <laughs> is. It's the coolest job I had never heard of. And it's funny because when I say senior vice president, you know, head of one platform marketing, there's so much people don't know. First off, they don't really understand marketing, right? Vincent, like that's an AJ, that's a lot of the mystery of marketing. It's kind of as defined in one way, but there's so many um, aspects to it. It's such a, a dimensional or, uh, you know, industry. And I kind of like to sort of, when I'm talking to my mom and I always say to my team as a marketer, if you can explain the idea to your mom, then you're doing good because all the vernacular that we make up to sound really important and intelligent doesn't work when you're trying to sell something through to consumers, right? Um, I like to say we're kind of a collection of polka dotted unicorns. Um, We're part of the creative partnerships team within the ad sales and partnerships group. So again, groups within groups, right? Ultimately what we do is we tell brand stories. We work with advertising clients from your blue chip accounts to your direct to consumer accounts. We, you know, really work across digital, social, linear um, data. We have all the the platforms of connecting, whether you wanna target an audience 
or whether you want to be part of a specific story on our air and whether that's, you know, showing up and what, watch what happens live with Andy Cohen or on the Today Show, you know, in the morning. So, you know, when we have Kelly Clarkson in early, you know, early fringe and we've got, you know, the Real Housewives and Below Deck and literally um, Top Chef, I mean, you can, whatever your brand story is, we have a home where we can connect your brand to our fans. And we do so in partnership with client agencies and client direct. And a lot of what we do is bridge, what I like to say in the most simplest terms, need and want, utility of products and the want of products. You know, we all brush our teeth, we wear clothes, we use phones, you know, so what we're trying to do is get consumers to choose our clients' products through great storytelling. Um, and really what I, I love to sort of elevate the team, because like, you know, we always say we're not curing cancer here, right? Obviously in terms of that, but we may help make people's lives better by enhancing them, whether it's through raising money for charity, whether it's telling a great story, making them laugh, inciting them to share, giving them something to like think about, you know, so give, informing them, of course, because our news division is vast as you, as you probably well know, between CS, CNBC, MSNBC, Sky News, you know, list goes on and on. So we really do try to find the right uh, brand environment, a right environment for a brand to tell its story um, and make an impact on their business. Because ultimately we're not curing cancer, but we're helping stand up these businesses so that they can succeed and keep family, you know, people employed, food on the table and the lights on in people's houses. So when we lift ourselves out of the marketing vernacular, we are part of the economic ecosystem that is critical to our country, you know, and the world's success. So that's a little bit of uh, maybe elevating us this morning on a Monday morning, which by the way, I'm not a morning person. So this is like me on, <laughs> after three cups of coffee, oh, just wow. for the record. Yeah. <laughs> but no, that, you know, thanks for that, that explanation, because it's, you know, like you said, you think of NBC Universal in so many different ways and iconic ways. And it's so vivid when I always see the Universal come across the screen. It's like, oh, this is going to be, this is going to be great. It's so iconic there. Um, I got to admit, Vincent, I used to, I, when I first walked into the doors 12 years ago, I pinched myself. When I went yeah. for my interview with 30 Rock, I was like, oh my goodness, this is like, I could never even imagine being in this moment. So I still pinch myself getting to work here. So I feel I'm with you on that. That's awesome. Yeah. And then the, and you can see, you know, uh, I, I know it's a couple, a couple cups of coffee, but the passion shines through. It does shine, uh, shine through uh, when, when you talk about it. But so how did you get into this business? It, it, you know, a lot of people, we ask that question. It's like, uh -huh. I never studied marketing in my life and here I am, or I did marketing and here I am. We would love to hear your story. Well, similar to a lot of people, I, like I said, it's the coolest job you never heard of. I never heard of it. I didn't even know it existed. You know, um, I totally landed in this by accident and it's incredible because when you look at your life and all of, and your career, every single thing I did in my life from high school, you know, to, to, um, college to after college and my early career all of it added up to this moment. And it's sort of a fascinating um, evolution into this world because, you know, marketing to me was, it was a mystery. Um, I got my first job in advertising in a newspaper. You remember those days when we had to look at the newspaper yeah, to get absolutely. Um, so I was 1996. I was working at this company called Knight Ritter Financial. And I looked in the newspaper, it was the New York Times, and I found a listing for a media assistant at McCann Erickson. And I actually got the job and I worked there for three years with the most quoted woman in media at the time. And she was also known, renowned, difficult. And I won her over, um, maybe with a little sass and vinegar that I tend to have. And I just grew my career from there and it grew. And I, so I was on the media, on the advertising agency side for, for quite some time, for five years. And then I switched to marketing um, when I had two jobs in front of me, two paths. And I think we've all been there. I had a job offer to stay in this sort of industry of advertising, buying and planning, or I could move to marketing. And one was more money. One was a bigger title. And I, that would be, continued my path there. I took the lateral job for a lot less money and said, I love this because all of my creative talent that I think I had organically started to 
find itself into this work. And I just fell in love with the idea of marketing and I figured out what it is on the job, total osmosis. So um, just a very, very interesting thing. And I, I often say to people, I could have been missed because I didn't know anybody in the business. I never did an internship in this business. I didn't study this business and landed here and made a 25 year career out of it. So there you go. Yeah, Christine, it's always interesting when we ask this question because uh, I think it's about half and half. Half the people knew at uh, 15 that they're going to be a marketer. The other half, like me, just uh, kind of stumbled upon it. <laughs> yeah, and it's like it was totally um, accidental, but I, I like to say about halfway through it became intentional, right? AJ, like some point you start to figure out right. what you like, what you don't like, what you want to do more of or less of, and it just sort of kept evolving from there. And I started my marketing career in publishing. So um, very different, um, believe it or not, from all, you know, storytelling, journalism, things like that. But it was a very different kind of organization than where I landed. Um, and I was there for eight years and then came right. here for another 12. So it's, it's been an interesting journey. Yeah, so that leads, to my, it leads me to my next question. You've been at NBC for 12 years, which is great in a, in a time when most people are switching jobs every less than almost every two years, especially millennials. Uh, what's been a highlight for you during your time at NBC? And I know there's probably quite a few just based on our conversation so far, but we'd love to have uh, one or two that really stand out to you. Oh my goodness, there's so many. I mean, I started working at Telemundo actually in the Telemundo group. So they have a very, I, I was working at People in Espanol before that. so. I had the wonderful um, gift of my former publisher moving over to be chief operating officer of Telemundo. And that gets to how important relationships are and, you know, creating a really strong reputation for yourself. Um, and, you know, I think at Telemundo, I think one of the coolest things I did was I produced the upfront um, and I, for three years, you know, it didn't do great the first year. <laughs> um, but the third year I got five stars by industry standard and was right. And it was a, a very interesting experience to sort of be in this bridge of event marketing, which I'm very passionate about experiential marketing, um, as well as, you know, sort of bringing the story of our company to life from a B2B perspective, but treating that audience like consumers. And, you know, we did it at jazz at Lincoln center and it was just this incredible stage. And it was, sort of my last hurrah and in terms of that work and I moved on from it after and they you know gave it to other teams but that was a real highlight of my career is like one of the moments and I'm like wow that was the cool that was a very cool thing and then honestly every day of this job has been different every day this company has been different it's in, been in a constant evolution obviously technology has advanced that the pandemic certainly did but I have to say like my favorite time is really now I'm doing the work I've always dreamed about doing. There's no limit to my imagination. I have a tool. I have like, I like to say we have a toy chest or a playground of infinite toys, right? I get to be the kid that borrows everybody's toys and <laughs> play with them for a little bit and move on to the next one. It's kind of a, a dynamic environment that's always evolving and shifting. And right now I was um, actually promoted during the pandemic. <laughs> to head this team. So I started um, a new group called Portfolio Integrated Marketing, did it for about five years as a beta, and then got the opportunity as, our, as we went through a reorg last year to um, essentially run the one platform marketing team, which was essentially taking a little bit of what I was doing in portfolio and mixing it um, with the network ad sales partnerships team so that we can be more strategic at a cultural level, a consumer level, rather than at the brand level, at the network level. So really take our capabilities and architect them for every brand and what their business needs are, rather than just focus on, hey, I have this great show we need to, you know, that, you know, we need to obviously sell. So it, it became what I, I, a transfer of, you know, selling to consulting. Um, I think it was a transfer of push selling to pull selling. And I think it's something that our clients have responded beautifully to, but even more so I've been able to bring purpose into a lot of our marketing initiatives. So that is a passion of mine, um, you know, and, and how do we be in service to the audiences we serve, 
you know, how do we help again, like I was saying earlier, making their lives better through the lens of storytelling, but also the power of our platform. I mean, most people think of us as this scale brand, right? Like we're this mass brand. You come to us only when you have millions and millions of dollars. Yeah, we can work with that. We're good, <laughs> we're good with tens of millions of dollars. I'm good with that. But we can also play at any budget level. And so really educating a new, what I would call the next blue chip advertisers, you know, in the D2C marketplace has been a very exciting time for me as well. And I think about my career and it's like I started, I found my job at a newspaper, but now I'm working and doing ARR holograms with auto companies, you know, like the, the sort of what you've seen in sort of the beginning, what I call the sunrise of my career to where I'm at in the sunset of my career has been so exponentially different and innovative and, and always being on that forefront of it. I have the opportunity to be this entrepreneur here, right? Like I get to act like an entrepreneur inside a really big company with incredible backing and incredible leadership. So it's a long career to talk about. I'm giving you the high levels, but there's very specific things I can, you know, projects I can get into in a little bit if you guys want to go there. But that's kind of like, I guess, maybe a high level view, a uh, 30,000 view, foot view. Well, well, your passion shines through. So, yeah, but it would be great if you gave us one example that the audience could just kind of uh, wrap their head around for a project or something that you can share, obviously. Absolutely. Um, there's actually, if you want, if you don't mind, AJ, I'd love to share too. Sure. Is that cool? So, you know, I am a big advocate for diversification and the dimensions of diversity and bringing that into every aspect of your organization. And, um, you know, we have many brands, obviously, in the last couple of years for, um, you know, with our racial reckoning that has happened um, really un unavoidably. Um, long overdue. Um, so diversity, equity, and inclusion has always been at the core and passion of mine throughout my career. But it's it's something different when you can bring a brand into that and actually a brand feels the same. So we're matchmaking a brand with an initiative at all times and finding that right space. But we, um, we have this incredible program we did with Target called uh, Seen in Color. And it was really built upon the foundation of bringing BIPOC creators and giving them a seat at the, the writing table, the directing table in a much more powerful way. You know, we have always brought diverse voices in the history, the 94 year history of NBC and NBC Universal. Um, but, you know, in doing so in a more active way through our brand partnerships. And so we spotlighted um, three incredible rising storytellers, filmmakers, and actually stunted um, and shared their stories that they wrote, directed um, in partnership and actually under the, the mentorship of Will Packer. And we brought that to our prime time. Um, we brought that on every platform. We actually gave them an incredible um, partnership with our programming team where they're going to be writing scripts and a first look deal with them. So it's just a very um, fulfilling partnership in that not only do we unlock this opportunity for these creators, but then we open the minds of our audiences to stories they're not as aware of, right? And I think that that's a responsibility, a great responsibility of any media company is to use our platform to voice for the voiceless, but to also raise awareness and educate and inspire and empower people to think differently. You know, that's always been the job of media. And I, I think that you can't under underscore that enough that you have to take responsibility with that. And for Target, who, by the way, has always been on the zeitgeist, right, of pop culture, they are purveyors of it. They are um, elevators of it. And to partner with them was such an exciting time because our DNA as companies really matched up in a very powerful way with this. And so hopefully, like, we're going to build on this even more. And um, there's a program our company launched called NBCU Academy, which is about teaching the skill set and mentoring on a, on a long term scale. So we're really leaning in in this space. And I have to say the world um, of storytelling will be richer, the more diverse stories are told. So that's that's the way I feel about it personally. And I'm, I, I couldn't be in a better place right now to really see that to fruition, you know. And then on the innovation side, like, you know, an automotive partner of ours came to us and was like, 
we are launching our all electric vehicle, which by the way, has been, you know, in the works for two years, like all of these companies sort of, you know, testing and learning and all that. But this year, for whatever reason, was like all in every auto, all in on, on electric. I actually own one myself. <laughs> so I just bought the Ford Mach-E. So if you, if you, and it's, Absolutely, I got the Mustang Mach-E, so um, <laughs> I highly recommend it to anybody out there who's a Mustang fan. But um, for this particular company, we were working uh, with VW, and they really they wanted to launch it in a big way, but make it accessible. They wanted EV to be accessible to, at all budget levels and for any American interested in it. So obviously, in the pandemic, we had a challenge. How do we get people to the auto room? Because you have to test drive an electric vehicle to really understand the actual full benefit of it, right? But when we have social distancing, how do we get people to experience the car to want to go to the dealer? So we came up with this really cool idea. And we have been experimenting with holograms with some other partners of ours. And we ultimately created uh, and brought the auto showroom to the living rooms of people in America through AR technology. So we brought Retta, um, who's from Parks and Rec, to actually do um, a comedy, you know, a 30 second comedy bit and then a musical version of this creative. And she invited you in and then this, this NBCU code, which we also is part of our commerce platform. So the NBCU code, actually, if you put your mobile phone up in front of it, brought you to a virtual showroom with Redder, where she took over as car salesman-ish and walked you through the vehicle and you can interact with it and change its colors and everything. And it was such a cool you know, way of thinking about human need and, and tying technology to that human need and really enhancing people's lives and saying, you don't actually have to go to the showroom yet. We can actually design the car together and it's in your living room. And then if you want to test drive it, you can go check it out inside. And even transforming the idea of what a used car salesman is, or not a, not a used one, but a car salesman, and sort of saying, well, why can't it be your friend? Because most people get recommendations on auto from their friends and family, right? So this was a way for us to sort of bring the persona, a personality to bear, um, obviously bringing technology to make people's lives better. And obviously this type of code system is now really part of our day-to-day -day life, even when we go to a restaurant, right? So kind of normalizing this world, but also just, just, just what I would say is collapsing the purchase funnel. Like it's not just linear where we're building brand awareness. It's taking people and converting them and, you know, generating leads for this automotive partner and then ultimately driving to sale and conversion. So it's a, a very interesting, you know, two different projects that had two different purposes, but ultimately all had social, great social impact benefits at the end. No, that's awesome, Chris. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, those two examples there. That's so cool. You know, with the Retta at Parks and Rec right? again. I love it. She's. Uh, I can hilarious. send you guys the hologram so you can see it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. You know, it's like uh, you know, one of the most you know, the, one of the greatest shows of all time. By the way, Parks and Rec. You and I, we could we could do like seven more podcasts on just all the iconic programming that uh, NBC has. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, Chris, you, you touched upon it there with the particular automotive dealer. Uh, the pandemic, right? I mean, we have to address it because the, our listeners love to hear what challenges you, you, you know our marketers had and how they kind of overcame those. So can you talk a little bit about some of the the challenges um, that you know NBC Universal, your division there, kind of went through, and and how you had to you know uh, get through it? You know, that was one example there with the automotive, but I'd love to hear more. Yeah, I mean, I think. Uh... Necessity is the mother of invention. I think we've been working toward a virtual world for a long time, but I think the pandemic tripped it much quicker. Um, it forced it, obviously. I mean, doing our business, which is such a human business, building relationships in a virtual world was a complete um, flip the script on, on all of our worlds, right? I mean, I remember I'm commuting three hours a day. I'm traveling every other week to see clients. We're building these relationships where people are advertising and generating money, you know, and we're, and we're obviously trying to tell these great stories and do productions. Like you can imagine the shift from anything from, we can't do integrations anymore. Shows are not necessarily shooting right now. Um, you know, what's our content plan for the coming year if we can't shoot? I mean, it was, it was a atomic bomb on our industry, if you will. 
Um, and I have never seen a company pivot. And I mean, and so many did, but we truly and quickly pivoted to then start building, okay, how do we help our communities at large? We, we launched a program with Amex focusing on uplifting and standing up small businesses and giving them resources to survive, right? All of a sudden, like we went from, I would say three months of like taking stock and in, in like, okay, what do we do next to full on action mode and lean in? Um, everything changed. We learned how to produce in a virtual world. We learned how to create green rooms and media, you know, media rooms with our clients so that they can look into productions while not being there. You know, we learned how to in, bring in health awareness and, you know, the importance of testing at our sets. You know, we learned how to have client meetings and build relationships in a virtual world by, in a very interesting way, having these meetings, you're, you see, I have a drum set in the back. That's my, you ask me, oh, who plays the drums? All of a sudden we're connecting in a, a more transparent and, you know, personal way than we ever did before. I would never be in my client's living room. And here I am like with their kid crawling on top of them, mm -hmm. the dog, the cat running across. So you're, you're learning about people in a whole new way. So I would say it was three months of like, just being in shock to then full on action mode and evolving our entire way that we're doing business. So, but I, I mean, I, I absolutely feel like so much more good came out. I mean, I, I cannot underscore that unfor the unfortunate loss of life and the terrible things that happened during the pandemic. But I'm also a kind of, a, I guess I'm an optimist in the sense of what are the lessons you can learn from something like this? And I feel that we came out on top because we really leaned into our audiences. We really leaned in. We created um, a PSA campaign to educate on vaccination and on COVID testing and all of that. So we use our platform and our responsibility, I think, in a very, very powerful way. And I think we didn't realize the power. Like, you know, when you're doing something for so long, you can kind of take it for granted of how powerful it can be. I think this sort of brought that to surface in a much more meaningful way. And I think for me personally, just gave me a stronger sense of mission to be mission focused on what we can do with this platform that can make people's lives richer, better, healthier, you know, and, and make people smarter. And I think that's, you know, ultimately what came out of it, but I mean, everything changed, but you, you could probably imagine. Yeah, no, definitely. And, and, but you, you don't realize, like you said, it's, it, it's companies like NBC universal where throughout the pandemic you're watching MSNBC, you want to know what's going on. Uh, my wife and I, we welcomed a child in um, April of 2020. Mm -hmm. We're watching that news. Can I, can I be in the, you know, the hospital room? What's going on with the hospitals? MSNBC. And then, you know, it's, it's fascinating because like, I think the remote control became our control. Yeah. Right. Like streaming blew up right during this. Mm -hmm. We launched Peacock and we had, you know, um, that really sort of like just skyrocketed. And I think it was yeah. because your point, like there was so little in our control mm -hmm. that entertainment and content became our remote control. <laughs> and, um, you know, that was something I think like everyone experienced at, at a very deep level. Yeah, well, ex exactly. And I think people also, it, it's that those shows and that programming that people rely on. And then, you know, especially those shows that have, have come back that people are accustomed to, you know, seeing the production come back. They're like, oh, okay, this show is back. This is us is back, you know, like, um, good. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, it's, it's, you know, it we're, was that we're, outlet, we're, we're right? Back. Yeah, it, it is. Um, and Chris, congrats on your oh, yeah. baby. How yes, my, my second, uh, yeah, my, uh, you know, my second baby, we had to leave, we had to get out of uh, New York, but that's a whole other story. People in the podcast know I, had, I lived with my in-laws for 50 days. I don't recommend it. But anyway, um, <laughs> you know, thank goodness uh, Jeff and Diane don't listen to the podcast. They're not in marketing. They're retired. But um, Chris, Again, we were talking about your, your passion, your knowledge, your experience there. What would you say kind of a, a, a trait that you have that you need to have in this business that's kind of been a game changer for you? Yeah, I've been thinking about this because I've been talking a lot. Um, the podcast I did two years ago was actually about authenticity, and I feel like it's become this like buzzword, right? Um, I think for me, and, and AJ, you've said it a couple of times, it's, uh, it's passion and compassion. I think those are the two things that I've genuinely had. It's 
in my career that has made the difference and why I stand out to clients, why they trust me, why my teams, um, I've been privileged to work and, and lead many teams. And now this is the largest. I have 60 people on my team now that I'm privileged and honored to like be part of their story in some way, be part of their career trajectory. Um, I, I think authenticity is important, but that's singular. That's about you. I think what's really standing out about like my edge in the world is probably my compassion, my empathy, my curiosity. Um, I think those are the things that really matter, um, you know, in, in the world, I think in life. Um, and I think in your career, um, I don't think you can be like, what if, you know, I think about authenticity and I was sort of like, this is kind of a funny question, right? What if your authentic self is not a good person? Like you're gonna show, you can't show up that way. Like you can't, <laughs> like you can't authentically be a jerk. Like it's just not gonna work for you in your career. So I think leading with compassion um, has actually been, you know, and human first and being more people first. I always say to my team when something happens in their lives, and um, we, I'm, you know, in the last two years especially. We've been divorced together, married together. We had kids together. We had sick family members together. We've lost family members together. Like, and we spend more time with our coworkers than we do with our own family and friends. So what's been fascinating is that, you know, when you, when you are a people first, family first team, I think people feel a stronger sense of connection to it. I think they feel a stronger sense of purpose and what's better than finding your purpose in your work. And we started out with this, Vincent, love Mondays as much as Fridays. Like I say it to my team all the time. If you can't, if you're not in a place where showing up to work doesn't make you feel good, you're not in the right place. Maybe it's not a, you know, hundred percent of the time, but at least 80%, if you're thinking about like showing up to something you're passionate about that you care about. And I am just, I guess I also wake up with a very strong sense of gratefulness that I, I was a college dropout. I could have not been anybody. I could have landed in just the same kind of community that I grew up in, which by the way, was wonderful in many ways, but limiting for a woman. Um, you know, I'm the first woman in my family to have a career. I'm the first one to um, have, you know, own my own home on my own, live on my own, still to this day, by the way. Um, so I, I, I really feel like I was an inventor in my life. I showed up with a lot to prove. Uh, a fear of failure, which most people have, and I have a lesson in that, um, and uh, a, just an absolute drive for people. I love people, and I live to serve as a leader, and that is absolutely my number one, because I will never be remembered for the projects I just talked to you about, right? I, let's say I leave this company. NBC Universal will always take credit for those ideas. I think my legacy and what's most important for me is the people I've maybe helped in some way or inspired in some way or ignited in some way. Like it's, it's showing up every day to, to really be part of making people's lives better. And that is servant leadership that you probably heard of before. It's, it's really, I mean, and I don't think you can fake that. You can't show up and fake that. That has to be part of who you are and what you really want to achieve. Um, and I, you know, and again, it used to be about the work, but I think somewhere along the line, it, I realized when someone told me my purpose, which was that I breed le leaders. Um, and I, I don't know that there was ever a better compliment of my life than to say that you breed leaders. You, you inspire people to find leadership in themselves and that's honestly the most scalable change you can make in culture. That's the most scalable way to move mountains when you have a pandemic or you have new innovation. Like if people feel like a leader at any level that they're existing at, no matter what title they have, you can do anything. I mean, you can you know, solve any problem. You can invent any new platform um, and make it work because when people believe in it and they believe in you, they want to be part of that mission, you know? Christine, we can that was a talk long about answer. It. I hope I didn't bore you guys. I <laughs> know. Uh, I think we can talk about leadership for hours, but unfortunately Ugh. we have uh, just a few minutes left and uh, we have to ask you our staple question, which is, uh, I'm sure with your title, you get a lot of LinkedIn messages. 
And we'd love to know, especially the second half of this question, what's a LinkedIn message that gets a response from you? And what's one that annoys you because you're such a cheerful person that <laughs> the, the latter question is of great interest? <laughs> Um, that's so great. I love I, I, I listened to a couple of your podcasts and I heard the way some people answered. I, I think LinkedIn is the coolest thing ever. First off, let me say that. I have, I don't know that I've been annoyed, AJ. I think I was sort of more like, I get kind of the same messages and it, now it says sponsored. It never used to. All of a sudden they started, they got it <laughs> and it's sponsored. And it's like, we'd love to have you come speak at this so-and-so, but they don't know anything about me or why they want me. And I think what made me, what made Vincent stand out in his outreach was he had, you know, very specific reasons and what, and, and, and sort of background of why, right? So I love when someone makes a connection either between their belief system or something that they saw or, um, they saw me on a panel and they reached out like that always gets me. Um, or even something like I'm, I'm trying to solve a problem. Like, what do you think? That always grabs me, like feed my curiosity, you know, spark me in some way. Be provocative. Right. I love a good tension point in marketing, you know, but it's like when people just sort of do a standard written thing without any true personal connection, then it's just like a copy paste. I would say I don't respond as quickly to those. But, you know, I'm glad that I do because I wouldn't be sitting here right now if I didn't. And I wouldn't have met many people who have, you know, um, connected me to other companies, connected me to new people, connected me to new employees, potential employees. Like LinkedIn is an incredible way to build your brand, to have a point of view. Um, you know, I, I do blog. I, I'm a blogger on the side hustle. And I also, you know, um, share a lot of my thoughts and um it's, it's such a great platform for sharing and supporting. So I, I highly recommend it to every single person on my team and every single person who's rising in their career or even reinventing themselves mid-career because we know, you know, there's a lot of those people too. So it, 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 you should be relentless in your pursuit of connecting and using that platform for it. Does that sound like a lecture? I hope it is. <laughs> no, I, I'm learning. We're always learning. This is great. Christine, any final thoughts uh, while we wrap up our segment here? I just, I love what you guys are doing and I'm, I, be, I feel so privileged and honored to be here with you guys. Um, you know, I, I, final thoughts, like there's so many thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a final. Can I help? Because because I, I want to talk about these. You said side hustle there. Yes. That's another thing we have in common, Chris. Yes. So quickly, mm -hmm. tell us about the side hustle. That's why I was like, look at this. We are New Yorkers. We work hard. We have our side hustles. You you you, you touched upon that. So um, not to interrupt your final thought, but I wanted. I, no, I, wanted I mean to lead uh, to it, Vincent. Yeah. Oh, good. Uh, nice. Because I want to. I I I love what you're doing. So I wanted to get into that as well. Thank you. Well, I, I think I was a self-proclaimed queen of side hustles in our conversation, right? That's what I said. <laughs> um, and, you know, I've been a writer my whole life, but I never thought that I was an artist and I never thought I really had something that people would be curious about. I started writing again at 40 years old when a friend of mine launched um, something called The Daily Feels. So I started blogging under the moniker of Freak of Nurture. And I've been writing um, regularly for about four years now. Um, I also have a passion for interior design. And I have a company called Cherry Home Designs that we just started launching a restoration furniture um, part division, if you will. <laughs> Very small, teeny tiny, me and, and my uncle's girlfriend. <laughs> and then, um, but we're doing good and it's fun. It's just such a great hobby and a great creative expression. And then we launched a company called Casa di Amici, which is a vacation rental business. And I think, you know, it's House of Friends. It's all about, you know, bringing people together. And I think it was really timely, obviously, coming out of the pandemic and families wanting to be together for the first time. And we have this big house in Wildwood, New Jersey. So lots of passions and side hustles that I would say every one of them has made me better as a marketer. So launching this small vacation rental business, I've learned about marketing from a small business perspective. Um, while I had this great 25 year career working with big brands. And I think you need to understand both worlds in particular because all the consumer, consumers we serve at a national level live locally. So connecting those worlds is, couldn't be more important, right? 
I also it. think that how you tell your story has to be true from the brand and how it looks to what you say when you speak to your customer. So I've had such a deep passion for customer service and, and how you really communicate to people your brand values. And that played out in real life, you know, in a very different way in, in doing that. And then also, you know, with writing, storytelling, any way you tell a story, and actually my tagline for my business is live your story. So like everybody's story evolves and changes and, you know, how you storytell and how you curate a story can happen in any medium that you choose, whether it's a piece of furniture, whether it's a, a blog about your life or whether it's a, a brand campaign, your brand represents a life story. And I think if we treat it like that, there's so much of a stronger connection that you can make to people. And I guess that's my ending message would be like, don't believe that your personal life and your professional life don't intermingle. I think that's the magic for me is that I've never treated my life as two distinct separate worlds. Mm. I've always enmeshed them. And I always brought my whole self to work. Sometimes dialed a little bit up too high, Vincent, as you can imagine as a girl from Brooklyn. That's a, a, a story of my life too, Chris. Right? <laughs> I, I've learned how to dial it back a little for certain audiences. Um, but yeah, I, I, I come as my complete self and I welcome my team to do that. We do do something called Culture Plus. So all about the culture ad that people bring. We share our personal passions and hobbies and family recipes. And I think that's what brings people together. And that's where the dimensions of diversity show up. And that's where we really connect as human beings. And I think that's the magic. I think that's it. I love it. I love it. What a final thought. What a guest, ladies and gentlemen, the marketing stir. Chris, this has been awesome. Thank you so much. Once Thank again, you, Chris Escribano, she is the <laughs> SVP, head of one Platform Marketing at NBC Universal. I'm Vincent. That's AJ. This has been The Marketing Stir. Thank you so much for listening every week. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to The Marketing Stir podcast by Starista. Please like, rate, and subscribe. If you're interested in being a guest on the podcast, email us at themarketingstir at starista.com. And thanks for listening.